shock is a holistic phenomena and a holistic experience. It touches every aspect of our being. Shock impacts our physical body. It impacts our emotional body. It impacts our mind, our cognition, both our ability to think and also in the larger sense of the thoughts that we tend to believe, the, our belief systems and what we hang on to as being true. Shock impacts our spiritual life, our connection to our own source, and our understanding of who we are as embodied beings, as Lawrence was referencing earlier. Shock impacts us in every level of our existence. What it does essentially is it diminishes who we are and who we can be. And it creates a separation. It, it, it causes us, our system, to fracture, in a sense, to wall off parts of ourselves, to protect parts of ourselves. And what's particularly difficult is that it causes us to continue to protect ourselves when we no longer need protection. In a sense, when we're in shock, we're stuck in time. We're stuck in the past. Because our system, in, in many ways, is acting as if there's still some threat, even if there's no threat. As a, a dear friend of mine said the other day, shock is both more mundane and more painful than we sometimes realize. Now the traditional definitions of shock and trauma, so those are two different words. When I started my pre and perinatal training, I remember one morning we were having the conversation about shock and trauma being different things. And the distinction that was being presented was primarily psychological. And I don't remember all the details of it, but I've not studied a lot of psychology. I took Psych 101 in college, you know, it was a long time ago. But, you know, the definition of, of well, there's trauma, but it's not as bad as shock. And, I, you know, we're going back and forth, and yet my experience as a body worker, as a practitioner of energy work, is that, well, I feel the same thing in the body, but it's a matter of degree. That there's a spectrum energetically, somatically, neurologically, you know, all the, the bits and pieces we break out. There's a spectrum, but to me the spectrum is, is an unbroken whole. Someone says, well, trauma is not so bad and shock is, it's like, well, sure, there's more energy with shock than with trauma, but the energy is not any different, really, to my experience. So this is, this is me talking from my experience. I don't sense a big difference between the two in terms of what I feel in people's systems. It plays out differently may not appear as bad if it's just trauma. You know, whereas shock, you know, shock is, whoa, shock, heavy duty. People having these big cathartic experiences on the table sometimes, and you've all seen those, right? <laughs> None of you have done that anymore because you've all <laughs> been through the training, right? Right. Yeah, you don't do that anymore. That's good to know. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that. These, 
Yeah, shock, you know, shock can be very dramatic and sometimes kind of scary in a, you know, in a practitioner client context or even a classroom context. It's like, wow, what's happening? You know, is that okay? The good news is, yes, it's okay. The other good news is we don't necessarily have to go there to heal it. That's probably better news for half of you. Everyone just went, oh, good. We don't have to do that. But for me, what's important experientially is that I don't, I don't make a distinction between shock and trauma from a real operational perspective in my work. They're all, they're all part of a, a spectrum. But here's the key thing, whether we call it shock or trauma or whatever we call it, whatever language, something has happened. See, our body is, you know, we have an energy body. We all agree with that, right? We all work with the energy body in different ways. We have a body and we are in a constant energetic interchange with our environment. For those of you who have studied biodynamics, Dr. Becker, Rollin Becker, called that the biosphere, which was the zone of interchange between our energy and the energy of our environment. You know, you're walking down the street, you're in an energetic interchange with your environment. The environment here has a lot of energetic diversity and activity, a little bit more so than where I live a little bit more so than Crestone. And our body is, we're, we're constantly taking in energy from an, our environment and we're constantly dissipating energy back to our environment. There's an interchange happening. However, there are times when more energy comes into our system than we are able to assimilate, process, and discharge. Right, too much energy comes in, or it comes in too quickly. And for every one of us, there's a threshold beyond which we're not able to assimilate, process, and discharge the energy that comes in. That threshold for each of us can vary moment to moment, depending upon a lot of different circumstances. But there's a point beyond which our system just cannot process the energy that's being input. Or we're being exposed to a certain kind of energy over and over and over again, so that the accumulative effect of it is too much for our system to process and to discharge. And so when that happens, our system has to do something with the excess energy that it's taken in. Right? How does our, our system then manage an overflow of input? Generally speaking, what our system will do is somehow work to hold that energy in stasis. So we get a certain amount of input, it's too much input, our body goes, whoa, that's too much input. I need to manage this somehow. I need to hold this in stasis. So here's the pop quiz for you biodynamicists. Am I defining the formation of an inertial fulcrum? Or am I defining the formation of shock? What's the difference? What's the difference? you might notice that our definition of an inertial fulcrum in cranial work is not any different, really, than our definition of shock. An inertial fulcrum, and for those of you who are new to biodynamics, I just threw you in the deep end of the pool, so I just want to acknowledge that. When too much energy is coming into our system, our energy is coming in too fast. The breath of life, our, li our fundamental bioenergy of health and wellness, has the capacity to take in that energy and because it's not able to 
process and discharge, it does have the capacity to form a stasis field to hold that energy, what we call an inertial fulcrum, going back to some of the original language. It's also called conditional forces. And the, the dilemma of biodynamics is we're drowning in synonyms. <laughs> we're drowning, there are too many words that are referring to the same phenomena. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? And it, it gets confusing because there are like five terms that are all talking about the same thing. Right, shock. shock, you know, inertia. So our system holds this energy. It forms an inertial fulcrum. But the definition of shock, you know, if you've studied Peter Levine's work and, and all the work that's come around lately around shock and trauma, the definition of shock is too much energy is coming into the system. Our system's not able to process it. And our response is we go into shock or we go into trauma. Well, those are the same things, really, aren't they? It's too much energy has come into our system. Our system has to do something with it. It's a protective mechanism, right? You know, suppose you're walking down the street and some guys are doing construction, no offense, Charles. And, you know, something falls off a building and whacks you on the shoulder, right? There's a certain amount of force that's coming into your system and your body has a hard time dealing with something falling off a building and landing on you. And so what does it do? It does the best that it can in that moment to protect certainly the, the, the organism and also the integrity of the energetic body, which aren't really separate, but we think they are because... That's kind of how our minds are conditioned. Our body does the best that it can to mitigate the impact, literally, of a falling object, or in other circumstances, to mitigate the impact of a psychological assault. And those come in infinite shapes and sizes. To mitigate the impact of a psychological assault which also come in many shapes and sizes. Advertising is one small example of psychological assault. Quick aside, there's a really, really funny book by Tom Robbins. Do you all know Tom Robbins? Mm -hmm. He wrote a book called Fierce Invalids Home from Hot Climates, which is a hysterical book. And in this book, the, the main character is a CIA agent who's a little bit on the edge. And one of the refrains he repeats through the book is, the more advertising I see, the less I want to buy. <laughs> Which I just love that line. Because it just, it just hits it. So anyhow, there are different ways in which our body can be impacted, literally and physically. And our system does the best that it can under those circumstances. It's really, really important to understand something. The formation of an inertial fulcrum, or the, the, the way in which our body deals with too much energetic input, is a manifestation of health. Thank you. The presence of inertia in someone's system is the healthiest expression that their system could manage under the circumstances. This is vitally important to understand. When we see inertia or shock or whatever label we put on it, whenever we see something being held in someone's body, we have to understand that that was the healthiest thing that their system could do under those circumstances at that time to make it through life. So when you get your hands on someone, because you all have resolved your inertia, right? <laughs> when, when you put your hands on someone, you feel, oh yeah, there's stuff there, you know, here, there, everywhere. You have to always appreciate that what you're seeing is the activity of health in their system. You're seeing 
what Dr. Becker called the bioenergy of health and wellness, actively working to maintain the best expression of health possible. So, you know, it's really easy to fall into, oh my God, there's this, there's that, there's the other thing. It's like, no, this is the health at work. Because if it wasn't for that, you know, they're, they're not going to be in your room getting a session or they won't be in a class participating as we do here. So everything we see, even though it looks kind of dire, is the activity of the breath of life holding the system in the best way possible. 